Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. This is a reaction to the best deviled eggs. Three ways to make deviled eggs. I've never heard of these in my life. I don't know what a deviled egg is. I just saw other um, reactors reacting to this and I was... I, I'll be honest, I was just like wondering what the hell this could be because is this a thing like throughout the US that maybe it's just a common way to have an egg? Or is it something completely different? I don't know, but the video's got a lot of views. This guy has... Yeah, 1.3 million views on a video to do with a topic of a food that I love, but I've never heard about deviled eggs. But yeah, we're going to check this out. Hopefully going to enjoy. Um, hopefully you're all doing well. And let's see and learn about the three ways to make deviled eggs and what they are. Dropping by and guess what? The Easter Bunny's on his way in, but hey, we're going to help him out with the eggs. Is it an Easter thing? Wait, when did he post this? April. 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 Because... My girlfriend's family, they have a, an egg a certain way. It's like with mayonnaise inside that, like where the egg yolk would be. Obviously, they boil the eggs first, cut them in half, put mayonnaise or something. like Not mayonnaise, it's like a mixture of things, I think, inside where the yolk would be. Is it similar to this? Situation, we got deviled eggs three ways. This looks somewhat similar. It's a sweet, a spicy, and there's a secret ingredient in one. Come on, Poor let's dog. hop on down there. I'll see you in camp. <laughs> Poor guy. Oh, is this guy like a proper chef? Oh, damn. Thank y'all for stopping by camp. We are so glad and so honored to have you because, folks, you have tuned into a place to where we're just going to bring you peacefulness happiness maybe even some excessive tail wagon and great <laughs> recipes that's what we got to share with y'all because we are so glad we're watching we care about each and every one of you and we consider you all family we oh do. what a guy and today woo we something that's graced ever summer picnic eyes have ever easter dinner that was ever laid out there so beautiful guess what it is what you heard me talking about it deviled eggs mm -mm -mm. Oh no, dos and trace. Three ways in Oklahoma that is, and ooh, they are good. Every one of them's a little different. So let's talk about some tips for these deviled eggs. I think this is what the food is. It's like a Romanian dish for Easter. So mustard mayo. I don't know what this is, and I guess you've also got the yolk that you mix into it. Don't do. And first of all, folks, I think the thing that rings the bell right up there at the top, number one is a fresh egg if you can find it. I'm talking fresh. I want you to sneak over, put your hand under that chicken butt, and just sort of walk around until it lays that egg. That's what I'm talking what fresh. But if you can't get a fresh egg or you can't get there, folks, I, I really have become fond of them organic brown eggs, cage free. They got a tougher shell on them than them white things that you can nearly hold up to the light and see through right off the bat. I do love a brown egg. They are some goodness, they are. But the next thing we're gonna talk about is you need to put your pot on that stove, get you some water boiling before you ever think about putting them eggs in there, okay? Make sure it is boiling. Then you can put them in a spoon or you can place them ever so gingerly in there. And we're gonna let them boil 10 minutes at the least. 10 minutes is what we're looking for. 10 minutes for, is always that for is me. That is a good hard boiled egg. egg. When that takes place, turn the fire off. If you're tough like me, reach in there and just grab them out of there. It'll get a spoon, <laughs> dip them out. Let's put them in something, cover them with water, cover them with ice. Now, to me, I really think if you let them things chill good right there, then let's drain them, then let's set them in the ice box. Hey, I like to let them chill about two hours. I think they even peel better that way. So the number one, remember I told you there's three of them. We're going to start in numerical order, we are. Number one, Shan's recipe. And whew, it even made the cookbook. What you say? You don't have one of these? Well, they are available now. We worked hard on putting them in He's there. He's got the plug and in I as well. I did follow a chicken around out there for a long time to get enough <laughs> eggs for Shan to create this recipe. When you go to cracking these eggs, I like to crack them all the way around. Now, some of you might be thinking as you look there, we ain't even got another bowl to put these in, sugar. <laughs> so we're going to put them in here for right now. If some of you have ever went back and watched the scotch egg video and remember how we took them out of, whoa, little cackleberries, took them out of there and then blowed the egg right out of the shell, you can do that if you're gifted. You can look at that video. Okay, folks, here we go. We got this here egg. Now, y'all have heard me call it a cackleberry, a rooster bullet, and some hen fruit. <laughs> now, all of these bullet. are available and you can pick up at your local, local chicken house. You can. Make sure the neighbor ain't there. He might not want you getting them. So the recipe says cut them lengthwise. Now we're gonna do that. 
but I like to do that with a serrated knife rather than just a sharp knife. So we're just going to take, try to get right in the center and just cut right through there. Mm. Oh my gosh, so precise it is. Why am I doing just three when the recipe called for six? Because folks, I've been practicing on this all week and Shan will tell you, when I eat that many eggs, if we have to make the whole recipe, <laughs> it might not be good, folks. So we're just doing it with three, but the recipe you will get will be the complete deal. Three little eggers, the yolk. That's what we got to get out of there, folks. See how they come out when they're good and chilled like that? And I want you to know, folks, that we're going to put all these together, and then we're going to showcase it there at the end. So we got our little empty shells, which need to be loaded back up here in a minute. So we'll put them right out there like that. Now, I have done this different ways, but it is best if you do it with a fork, and I'm going to have to get mine. Didn't take long. I thought I left it somewhere else, didn't you? Uh huh. Y'all were all thinking maybe it's at town. <laughs> now, I don't like to combine nothing else before you just go ahead and let's just mash these eggs up. Now, whew, that right there, mm, that's what I call looking some good already. So get them all mashed up really good. And then next is going to come on the goodness. So we're going to put them right there in the middle. I want you to pan over and look at that dog, Shan. What is that dog's name? Duke. Duke. He has his own line of mayonnaise now, Duke's. So many of you wow. Southern folks have always been telling me, boy, cowboy, you need to get some Duke's mayo. Well, folks, if you can find this stuff, it is actually the best mayonnaise I have ever used in my life. Next. We're going to add some relish and folks you got to be having some kind of mustard now you can use that spicy brown mustard dijon mustard but i'm going to use about this much that is the correct amount now remember when we was telling you there was one that was extra devilish in this deal Ooh, guess what it is no <laughs> i hear some of you out there the cowboy done broke out to potted meat no, it is not. Y'all seen me take a picture of it earlier? It is deviled ham. Shan got to tell me she used to love this stuff spread on a sandwich, and when she was going to school, she'd have it. So we're going to add us some of that there deviled ham. And next Damn. comes the mixing apparatus. So this looks, I feel like in my girlfriend, like for their Easter meals, they'll have probably just like mayonnaise and then just the yolk mixed together maybe with like a few spices or some, something like that this one definitely seems a lot more seasoned not to say that theirs wasn't good that's not what i'm saying it's just this is just obviously different like it's got mustard in it but at the same time maybe it does have mustard i don't actually know what's in their typical version of this so we'll just get her all back over and in this big bowl that may take just a little time but it's going to be just right it is so we got it to this point, and now would be a time to where we might need to adjust it for salt, pepper, maybe even a little more relish or even a little more mustard. So, guess what? We're going to salt and pepper it, we are. Because I know it's going to need a little of that. And then we're going to add a little salt. Give it another stir. Mm. Folks, you get that little bite of relish in there with that deviled ham, but I sort of got a sweet tooth today, so I'm just going to add just a tad bit more of that relish. The salt and pepper and the mustard intake is what I'd call just right, so we're going to call it at that. That deviled ham in there, mmm. Shan must have knew what she was talking about when she put that in there. So, if it was me doing it, we'd do it a different way, but Shan says we're going to put all this in a baggie and we're going to pipe it in there. Now, piping something you do to water if you're trying to get it down there to another set of cows, but I'm going to pay attention today, so pardon with me while I get a baggie. Well, I think they're in here. Some of you might be asking yourself, say, cowboy, why such a big baggie? <laughs> Matches the big bowl it does. So I guess I'm in pretty good shape. Just make sure you get it all in there. So we got our little eggs in the little deal. We got all our little fellers ready to be loaded there. So just take your knife and cut the corner of this right out of there, unless you got one of them piping bags like we used in the churro video. And then Shan says make them pretty. So I'm just gonna make them like that right there. Y'all can tell 
my pastry chef ability might not be as good as y'all's or Shan's. There's a lot of we're excess. Going all out, we're going to use us some smoked paprika. And you can sprinkle as heavy or as light as you see fit. The wind is blowing, so we're going to have to allow and get way back over here. But, ooh, that nerd didn't get a little dusting on one side. But, folks, that right there is what you call a deviled ham and egg. Recipes in the cookbook, and it is so good. But don't quit me now because we're fitting to get to version number two. Well, on we to go. round number two it is. And this is what I call spicing it up just a bit. Woo-wee. And they're going to be oh so good. So, you see me, we done put all them eggs in there. And just like before, we got to do a little mashing. So, get them back over here in the middle. Is this like a very common thing in the US then? Like, is this like a common, um, it's like a starter for like your Easter meals or something? Or just like something that you'll eat throughout Easter? And folks, we're gonna go back with that Duke's mayonnaise again. I'm gonna add me some mayonnaise. Some look here, honey Dijon mustard. About that much. Now folks, Y'all knew I was gonna break it out sooner or later, didn't you? The green chili chipotle relish. Now, if you ain't got this, I'd advise you to order some, but if you can't get it in time, hey, get you some of them adobo peppers. You know, chipotle pepper in adobo sauce. Get you one out of there, chop it up really good. But I would put me just a little bit of white sugar in there with it because you need that sweetness for this recipe. So we are gonna put about a tablespoon of that as well. We are gonna add us some garlic. It's a very fancy way to have an egg, isn't it? And last but not least, some Red River Ranch Mesquite because it's got some of that ancho chili. Now I'm just going to start with a little because we are going to mix it again and taste it to see if we're about right. But folks, this is probably one of my favorites. Even though Shan's recipe is great and I love it. Mm. Well, we have got her mixed up. But somewhere we have a spoon. Mm. See y'all next week, folks. I'm gonna go ahead and just eat this. Mm. That is some fine dining right there. So I don't think we need to adjust that taste nowhere. And guess what? Shan said we're gonna put it in another baggie. So that's what we're gonna do. Is Shan behind the camera? I think he is, right? She is. There's a the tail wagon. Oh, it's raining now. Yep. Well, folks, we have made it to the grand finale. You have stuck around through it all. As you can see back there, Ooh, it is a glorious day. Oh, glory there. We got us some of them storm cows. clouds rolling in. Might even sing that Garth Brooks song after a while. And the thunder rolls. I don't know, but stick around with us because this is the last one and it's got a little special kick to it right there at the end. So, let's go back to mashing eggs again. Now, you're going to notice something totally different about this recipe right off the start here in just a minute. And you're going to be thinking, the cowboy has lost his mind. No, he ain't, folks. He knows what's going on. This is a good deal, I promise you. Don't think bad of me. We got one egg we didn't cut in half. You know why? Because it's going right in the mixture, too. Oh, We're going to use the white to yellow. So this mixture is going to be a big old mixture. And all of it, because I need it for the taste and the body of the little deal. So... It's gonna be good. You can see now, I didn't mash all them, just pulverize them to death because I need them to be just like that. But I took me some out there bacon and chopped it up with that hash knife bacon. very finely. But I did. I think this one's already onto a winner to be fair. If there's bacon in there, then yes, please. You know that you have to save some bacon to feed the critics. So there's one critic. Don't get your paws on the table. <laughs> and here's the other one. Good boy. They do like some bacon. Let's go ahead and get that bacon in there because this is already looking like breakfast here. Bacon and this eggs. This guy is quality. Yeah, 
You heard it right here, you did. It is gonna be some fine dining. <laughs> Let me move him right here, cause we're gonna move right on to the Duke's Mayo again. They should be sponsoring this. Uh-huh. And then folks, right after that, we're gonna have us some relish. After that, we're gonna have just regular old mustard this time, okay? One thing really bothered me when you get some mustard, you know, and you go to squeeze it there at first, it ain't nothing but water. Always give it a good shaking and then it'll be ready to go. Oh, and that's just the right amount right there it is. Mm -hmm. Now we're gonna go with what? The W sauce, the thing that Ken has a little trouble pronouncing. And about that much, yes we are. Gotta have a little garlic. Mm-hmm. Garlic makes everything better. Now folks, this is where you might think to yourself it could be getting a little odd. This is honey. Here. Some honey, <laughs> yep. That's what I'm talking about, 100% pure raw honey. Damn. And I'm gonna put about that much. Just right. enough it to get some sweets to it. Now we gotta mix her all together and then we'll season it with a little salt and pepper just to see what's happening. But mm, I'm already liking the way this looks when I can see that bacon in there and that honey and mustard. Mm -hmm. So that is a done deal, that dog will hunt. And let me tell you right there, that will make your tongue reach around and slap you in the back of the head and knock your dentures out. I don't care what kind of poly grip you use. <laughs> that stuff right there is good. So, have baggy wheels. There we go I'm again. to open a pastry chef right down here at the river if it don't rain, so let me get her in there. Well, didn't I do a good job there, I did. And let me tell you folks, these might fast become your favorite because it's even get crazier than you thought it was to begin with, remember? But look here chili powder yep y'all heard me right folks this goes so well with that you gotta have a little chili powder and look here it ain't got no sprinkler deal on it so you're gonna have to be careful today kent well folks i don't know if you can see it but raindrops is hitting me on the head like bj thomas song so i'm gonna go ahead and start with contestant number one over here mm. Mm. that one just screams out classic old Sunday afternoon at Easter. So let's move on to the <laughs> relish. See how fast can you eat an egg, Kent? Mm. Mm, mm, mm. And last but not least, the chili powder. The rain's getting to the man. Mm. You do a rain dance. <laughs> mm. Folks, that was good enough and we're doing this sort of as an Easter deal. So Andy, if you don't mind, my friend, would you pop us in some of that there bunny hop music? Well, folks, oh, God. even the dogs enjoyed this and I'm fitting to get wet and I ain't ashamed because Thank you, sweet Jesus, for the rain, because we sure need it in this country. We hope you enjoyed this, everything you this need to know. This guy is unreal, man. He is quality. Um, Cowboy Kent Rollins, one absolute legend. Keep this man safe at all costs. I just need to have, to, I just need to have, blah, blah, blah. I just needed to know how to make a basic deviled egg for my dad's birthday, but this is the best video I've ever watched. So are deviled eggs just a very popular thing in the US, or are they just a popular thing in general? Because... I'll be honest, I'd never even heard of them until Easter with my girlfriend's family. And I don't even know if that's necessarily a deviled egg the way they had it or what, but it's the closest thing I've ever had to seeing these. Um, I just discovered this guy and he's a total, he's total awesomeness. <laughs> Love the way that they film their vids. Yeah, he does seem like a lot of fun, to be fair. Um, but yeah, yeah, deviled egg's like an, an Easter food or just a food that people have in general. Because I, I guess because of me just seeing them at Easter for the for the Easter meals I assume it's just how you just you not you don't just have them for Easter but they're necess they're seen as like a an Easter food I don't know though but yeah let me know in the comments and yeah these look very interesting I mean you can put all kinds of things in them to be fair but hopefully you guys enjoyed and until next time like subscribe and peace